everyone, Mr. Love here, coming to you from the diesel shop. Today we're going to talk about emissions a little bit, particularly diesel emissions, Tier 4 diesel emissions. So right now I have the school's International Work Star, has an L9 Cummins in it. This one is a Tier 4 truck, it has all the emissions on it that we'd run into in the diesel field. We have our EGR on it, we have our DOC, our diesel oxidization catalyst, we have our DPF, our diesel particulate filter, and we have our SCR system on there, our Selective Catalyst Reduction. So I got my J-Pro laptop hooked to it. I got a big screen so we can see it here a little bit better. So I'm going to fire up the computer here, and we can actually see it in real time, the temperatures and stuff that's going on inside our engine. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm standing here next to my big computer board. I got my truck out there running. You can see it's a fairly new truck. We only have 2,700 miles on this thing, so it's probably not ready for a regen yet, but we'll check out our system here, and we can still do a forced regen on it with our computer to see how it works. So let's get it fired up here. The first thing we have to make sure, we have to make sure we don't have any active codes on our vehicle here. If we have any active codes, we can't do a forced regen. So all we have is a couple of inactive ones for the heating system, so we're good to go here. We have to make sure our engine's up to temperature, between 120, 140 degrees, it's usually plenty to trigger that sensor. So we're up to temperature here. We'll go to our system diagnostics and we'll go to after treatment diagnostics. And we should be able to see our whole system here pretty nicely. Okay, so we have our whole system right here in front of us. What's kind of nice about this program on the JPro here is that it shows all our other stuff in real time. We got our temperatures, we got our pressures. We got what valves are open. We got what's going on in here. So let's just talk about our system here a little bit while it's sitting here. So right now, you can see our little colored pipes over here. We have red pipes here showing hot exhaust gas. We got cold blue pipes over here showing the cold intake here. One of our first emissions that we'll talk about today, our emission reduction systems, will be an EGR system, exhaust gas recirculation. So our exhaust gas recirculation, what that's going to do is when we're up to temperature, or we're going down the highway, our engine's running super efficiently and everything, our cylinders are getting super hot inside there. When our cylinders get super hot inside there, the nitrogen that's in the air, which most of our atmosphere is made of, you know, over 80% nitrogen in the air, combines with oxygen molecules inside our cylinder under high pressure and high temperature inside there. So we get our engine really hot inside there, everything's firing the way it's supposed to be firing. We're burning up all our other emissions that we're worried about, but we're making nitrogen oxides. Making nitrogen oxide and nitrogen dioxide. So we're taking the nitrogen molecules, we're combining them with oxygen molecules and making nitrogen oxides. Downside the nitrogen oxides, that's what makes our smog, that's what depletes our ozone layer, that's what really hurts our atmosphere and stuff like that. So we definitely want to limit our nitrogen oxides. So one of the first things they started doing on our diesel engines in the early 2000s, they put an EGR system on there, exhaust gas recirculation. They found that we could take a sample of our exhaust gas when we're up to temperature. So we have our exhaust gas coming right off our exhaust manifold here. We run it through our EGR cooler, which has coolant inside it that's cooling it down. Uses our engine coolant just circulating through there. So we have our exhaust gas coming in at about you know, a thousand degrees coming into our cooler, and our cooler is cooling it down for 300 degrees, somewhere in there, and then it's going right back into our intake. So when this valve is open here, our EGR valve is open, it's taking that exhaust gas and putting it right into our intake on our intake side of our engine. When it's in there, it kind of numbs our cylinder. We're putting exhaust gas in that doesn't have anything left to burn, so there's no oxygen in it. It's a nice inert gas, and we're cooling it down a little bit with our EGR cooler. So we're putting it down inside there, and it's really just numbing the cylinder. It's taking away, you know, the explosion um, process, and it's kind of numbing our cylinder down a little bit, so we're not combining the nitrogen and oxygen molecules together. So it doesn't do it all the time, just when we're up to, you know, a certain temperature, certain mile an hour down the road and stuff like that, just taking a small sample down through there. Most of our newer diesel engines, they have a variable geometry turbo on it. So our variable geometry turbo, it doesn't have a wastegate or anything like we're used to on our older turbochargers. It has variable veins down inside there that can control the back pressure and stuff, 
coming off of our engine into our exhaust there. So we got a variable geometry turbo on this one. We go downstream. Some of them will have an after treatment injector at this point right here. This one doesn't. This one uses um, fuel injected into the engine at the end of the exhaust stroke, which we'll talk about in a minute. But some of them will have a number seven injector, they call it, for our six cylinder engine. So six injectors in our regular engine, a seventh one in our after treatment system here, right in our exhaust pipe after the turbo. This one doesn't have that injector. Well, again, we'll talk about that in a minute. Moving downstream here, we have our diesel oxidization catalyst right here. So right now our diesel oxidization catalyst is about 297 degrees with my truck running out there. My diesel oxidization catalyst, what we do with that, it's a process where we kind of take our carbon monoxide, which is a byproduct from our exhaust, our CO, and we're going to inject some fuel down into our system here. It's going to heat up our diesel oxidization catalyst. Our diesel oxidization catalyst is that nice fine membrane coated with platinum or other precious metals like that that will react when we inject fuel into it to heat up our DPF and stuff like that. During regular operation, our diesel exhaust catalyst also heats up a little bit to burn off our carbon monoxide. So what it does, it takes our carbon monoxide, combines it with the oxygen, and makes carbon dioxide, the air that we exhale. So we take our carbon monoxide and we turn it into carbon dioxide and H2O, just water. So we're taking our, just our, um, we're taking our oxygen, we're taking our carbon monoxide, and we're taking our hydrocarbons that are in the fuel, our H, and we're making H2O and carbon dioxide in our DOC, diesel exhaust catalyst, or diesel oxidization catalyst, sorry. Our next one over here in line, this is our DPF. So our diesel particulate filter, we're going to think about this one kind of just like an exhaust filter. All our fumes you know, that we have coming out of our exhaust, we have very fine soot particles in them. We might not be able to see them with our naked eye, but if we put a piece of paper over the end of our exhaust pipe and hold it there for a while, we'd get soot and stuff on there. That soot and stuff that builds up isn't good for our environment. That particulate matter goes out into the atmosphere, people breathe it in, that's where we hurt our lungs and stuff like that over time. So we put a filter on the exhaust here, our diesel particulate filter. Our diesel particulate filter is good because it filters out all that soot and stuff and kind of stores it in our filter. We start to build up too much in our filter, that's when we have to do a regen process to clean it out of there, which we'll talk about in a minute. Our next item down here in our system, this is our SCR. So this is the latest technology in our exhaust gas um, emission stuff here. So this one, we started in 2010 on the truck side, and by 2015 on the off-road side, we started putting SCRs on items. So we have selective catalyst, selective catalyst reduction here. So what we do, we take a urea from our tank here. We have a tank with diesel exhaust fluid in it. So it's basically just a combination of urea and distilled water together. So that combination of water, at a certain time, will get sprayed right into our SCR catalyst here. When that SCR catalyst gets doused with our urea, our diesel exhaust fluid here, it makes a chemical reaction to get rid of the nitrogen oxides in there. So just kind of like our EGR got rid of our nitrogen oxides, our SCR also gets rid of them. The downside to our EGR is we're taking really sooty, crappy exhaust gas, we're putting it in our nice clean intake side. So it's not good for our engine. Makes our engine run bad and takes away our power, less fuel economy, makes dirtier engine oil, the soot inside there transfers down to our engine oil. A lot of downsides to our EGR. So we still have an EGR on this system, but we don't use it quite as much as if we would need to, especially at lower temperatures and not out on the road running to you know, sustained speed. So our SCR, they could operate at any load range or anything like that. Just when it gets up to a certain temperature and it senses that it has too much nitrogen oxides and stuff in it, we can get a little shot of urea sprayed into our stuff here, coating our catalyst, doing our catalytic reduction there for us. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a forced regen on this. So right now you can see that we don't have a D rate or anything on it. Our filter is nice and clean. There's no regen needed here. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a regen anyways, a forced regen, just so you can see how our temperatures change pretty quickly here. So let's just talk about our temperatures, what we have right now. 
So our exhaust gas temperature, right before our catalyst and stuff like that, right now is at 298 degrees. Inside our diesel oxidization catalyst, it's 298 degrees. Inside our DPF right now is 293 degrees. Our DPF outlet right now is 286 degrees. Our SCR intake is 286 degrees. Our SCR output is 261 degrees. So I'm going to do a forced regen on this, and we're going to get those temperatures from the 300 degree range up to the 1,000 degree range to burn off all that soot and stuff we built up in there that we'll talk more about in a minute. Let's get started here. We'll go to start regen. We should start regening our engine here. We just make sure all our stuff is good. Click yes. Okay, now we're going to start our regen process. So you can see here we have our temperatures about 290 degrees right now throughout our whole system, and we'll see it warming up pretty quickly here. So let's talk about our regen here a little bit. So we have our diesel particulate filter that just collected all the particulate matter, all the soot and stuff from our engine over time. So it's the collecting there. Eventually it might clog up if we're not burning it off regularly. So our DPS starts to plug up. We'll go to a low stage of it, plug it up. We might get a little light up on the dash saying that it's starting to plug. The operator sees that it's starting to plug. The best thing to do at that time is to kind of run our engine and everything a little bit harder. Always tell drivers and operators, you know, get a little more throttle, maybe drop it down a gear, run it a little bit harder. Just heat up that exhaust. We heat up that exhaust, we might burn off that little particles and stuff. Right now at this point, we don't have to worry about it again. If we don't do that, it starts to build up more and more over time. We start to get more and more plugged inside our system here in our DPF, then we're not going to get our exhaust gas flowing through there. So there's actually a little differential pressure sensor that reads each side of this. So on each side of our DPF here, we have a little sensor that's just reading the difference between it, how much pressure difference is on one side compared to the other. So we start to get it plugged up. We didn't run it hard enough, we couldn't burn it off, we get to our next stage where the light on our dash starts blinking at us a little bit. So at this stage here, we might be able to go into a regen uh, mode if we're going down the road. So we're going down the road, we're about 30 miles an hour for sustained time, you know, 10, 15 minutes, we're up to temperature, everything's going good. We're going down the highway or something like that, we're remaining, maintaining a you know, steady speed there. We get to that, we get our engine itself might start the regen process for us. So there's a couple different ways that engine manufacturers do this. One way is, in our exhaust stroke, we inject more fuel in. So usually during our engine cycle, we have our intake stroke, we just have clean air coming in to our cylinder there, compression stroke, pistons traveling up, compressing that clean air that's in our cylinder, superheating it to over 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Right at the end of our um, compression stroke right before top dead center of that piston, fuel starts to get injected in. Fuel starts to get injected in, starts to burn, we have our power stroke, our combustion inside there, forcing the piston down. So we have our combustion stroke, our power stroke, pushing the piston down. Our next stroke there, we usually have our exhaust stroke, exhaust valve is open, piston's going up, just pushing all that air out. What we're doing on our engine here right now is we're injecting fuel in on the exhaust stroke. So we already went through our power stroke and all that. Now we're just dumping a little more raw fuel in to our system right now. So with our electronically controlled injectors, especially on our QE systems, our common rail systems, we can inject that fuel in there anytime we want. The computer's gonna tell it when to inject. We don't have to wait you know, for a blocker arm or anything to push on the injector. We can inject it at any time. So we're injecting fuel down into our cylinder right now. Into it. That's going out our exhaust. It goes into our exhaust pipe here, and it's reacting with our diesel oxidization catalyst right now. So that raw fuel is combining right here with our substrate that's on our um, filter inside there, or on our membrane inside there, and it's making it heat up pretty fast. We're already up to 200, or 593 degrees right now. Our DPF is already up to 641 degrees. It's still climbing pretty fast here. So another way we could do this, instead of doing it on the um, exhaust stroke, we can have our number seven injector injecting the raw fuel right into the exhaust pipe after the turbo. The raw fuel goes just in there, it's doing the same thing, heating up our diesel oxidation catalyst, heating up our DPF from that fuel just spraying in there on the platinum coating and stuff like that. Okay, so at this stage here, 
going down the road, maintain speed and everything like that, our engine's going to start doing this ourselves. And it's going to keep doing it, hopefully, until it's totally cleaned out. As soon as it's cleaned out, it'll shut down and go back to normal operation. If for some reason we end a stop and go scenario or something, traffic jam, we're done being on the highway, we start doing no regular city driving, stop and go traffic, it's going to go out of that mode for us. Any time that we're not that sustained RPM for a certain period of time, it's going to go out of that mode. So if we go out of that mode, say it's a delivery vehicle, school bus, city bus, garbage truck, something that's stop and go all the time, we might never get into that mode. At that point there, our filter keeps plugging up and plugging up and plugging up. If we get plugged up enough, we might have to do what's called a park regen. That's where we pull over on the side of the road, and a lot of manufacturers, doesn't matter if it's off-road equipment like a tractor, heavy equipment, or on-road equipment like a lot of truck manufacturers, they'll actually have a button on the dash where you can do a park regen yourself. So you pull over to the side of the road in a nice safe spot, you set the parking brake, put it in neutral, don't touch any other controls. Don't touch the clutch, the throttle, any of that. Just let it sit there, park. You're going to hold down that button on the dash there, and it's going to do a park regen. So what happens when it does a park regen, the same thing that we talked about. It's injecting fuel into our system here. It's heating up our diesel exhaust um, system here, um, heating it up, burning it off. The problem with park regen is it takes about a half hour to 40 minutes, and we can't go anywhere. As soon as we hit the throttle pedal or the clutch or put it in gear or anything like that, it's going to automatically um, take it out of the regen mode on us. So our part regen is pretty much the last step we could do as just a regular operator if you don't have an actual laptop or a really good scan tool. So say we didn't ignore the part regen, we never regen it, we get to a point where it's not going to let us go any further. We're going to go into a limp mode. We're going to go to a stop engine mode where we're going to lose 80% of our horsepower. We're only going to have 20% horsepower left enough to basically move it at 10 or 15 miles an hour off to the side of the road and you know have a tow back to the shop or have a service technician come out to the field and actually hook to it with a laptop. So we hook to it with a laptop or scan tool. We can do what's called a forced regen, just like I'm doing right here. I went in, hooked my laptop to it. I met all the parameters and I could do a forced regen on here where I'm regening it myself. So you can see about six minutes, almost seven minutes, they have a lapse here, and we're up to almost 1,000 degrees in our DPF right now, 982 degrees right now, burning off. This regen process usually takes about a half hour also when we're plugged up inside here. So we're plugged up in here, so you can see we have a little color scale right here. White that we're at now is about 0%. And we go all the way up to black, that's 200%. So it's nice and white, so we're not plugged up at all. So we're kind of, we don't have to do this right now. I'm just doing it for the video's sake. So we're getting this burned off and everything like that. Getting it over to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Burning off all that soot and stuff that's down inside there. So we have a lot of soot. Now we're going to start to see black smoke and stuff coming out of our exhaust. Because it's burning it off internally there. We want to make sure that we're in a safe spot whenever we do this. We never want to do this inside, up against the building, under a tree. If we have downward exhaust facing the ground, we never want to have it over top of blacktop or hay or anything like that. That's going to catch on fire. Our exhaust temperature coming out the exhaust pipe right now is about 700 degrees. Sometimes it'll be over 1,000 degrees. Definitely easy enough to you know, light blacktop and stuff on fire. So we're still doing our DPF. We're doing our forest regen right now. And we would just let it run, do its whole cycle. Go through its whole cycle, registers that everything's good. It'll naturally slow itself back down again, and it'll eventually shut itself off from the regen process. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to keep checking this out, let it get up just a little bit higher here, and then we can manually shut it down. We can stop this regen at any time. With our forced regen right here, if we have a really plugged up DPF filter, you know, we get up to 150, 200%, we might have to do this multiple times. We might do a forced regen that lasts a half hour, but we only get it down to 100% plugged up. We get down to that stage there, we might have to do another regen. I've had, you know, some garbage trucks in the past where I had to do five or six regens on them. The other alternative to that is we pull off our diesel particulate filter right there, and we send that out to a cleaning facility. So we take it off there after it cools down. You obviously don't want to do it when it's 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. 
they send it off to a um, filter cleaning facility, and they'll put it in a special oven where they'll bake it, they'll blow air, pulse it through it, and vacuum it all at the same time. The downside to that, it usually takes about a week or two before you get that back. So, you know, you have to down the truck. Not too many places have spare DPF filters. The DPF filter itself, it could be between $1,500 and $5,000 per filter on here. So if you have a fleet of about 40 trucks, you might have one. But if you just have one or two of each kind of truck, you're not going to have all the different ones in stock all the time. So this is where we got to keep track of our regens and make sure we stay up to you know, date on our maintenance or anything. So you see here up to 1,000 degrees in our SCR, we're 1,000 degrees inside our DPF. Our exhaust temperature off our turbo is 600 degrees still here. So our variable geometry turbo helped heat up our exhaust here a little bit more. Plus we got raw fuel being sprayed down inside here. So, you know, we're heating up our exhaust pipe here. But you can see our catalyst is where it really changes for us. You know, our catalyst here is making it 400 degrees hotter just from being platinum coated, reacting with the fuel and stuff down inside there. So right now I'm going to stop my regen process here just because I don't need it. Okay, so I stopped my regen process. You see I have a new light up on the dash right here. So this light here, this is a high exhaust temperature light. So anytime you see these little smoke signals right here, that's our exhaust. You see our little thermometer there, that's our temperature. So high exhaust temperature. If our DPF was plugged, we'd have this symbol right here. I don't know how good you can see it on the video here, but it shows that the filter is starting to plug up. Usually we have different stages of this, like I talked about, we'll have the light blinking, we'll have a steady, we'll have a warning light on, a stop engine light on would be our worst case scenario there. So, you can see here, our system's starting to cool down a little bit. We don't want to go and just shut our key off at this point. We got a thousand degree exhaust temperature there. We want to let it run for, you know, 10 or 15 minutes naturally to cool down before we shut the key off. We shut it off right now. We have a lot of hot engine oil inside our turbo right now. That hot engine oil is just going to sit in there and bake. It's not going to circulate through there. It's going to get all carboned up, all coked up inside there, and it could take out our turbo seal. So we definitely want to let everything cool down naturally a little bit before we shut our key off. Okay, everyone. So I hope that helped you learn a little more about the diesel emissions here. So remember, this was a Tier 4 system. This one here had an EGR, an exhaust gas recirculation. It had a SCR, a selective catalyst reduction. It had a DPF, a diesel particulate filter. And it had a DOC, a diesel oxidization catalyst. So 2002 range, somewhere in the early 2000s, that's when we started putting the EGRs on there. 2007, that's when we went to the low sulfur diesel fuel, and we started putting the DPFs on stuff. So we put our diesel particulate filters on them, we put our DOCs, our diesel oxidation catalyst on them, and we were good there for a while on the on-road stuff. Get up to 2010 to meet those emissions, that's when we had to put our SCRs on there, or um, other you know, forms like that, where we spray urea into our selective catalyst reduction to have that chemical reaction to break down the nitrogens even further. So from 2010 on-road, 2015 off-road, that's when we got the SCRs and stuff on there. So nowadays, everything's at the same level for now. This is 2023, so you know stuff might change again someday. But right now, our complete diesel system here for our diesel emissions is an EGR, a DOC, a DPF, and an SCR system on there. So hopefully this video helped out a little bit. Have a great day, and give her diesel.